Hello everyone this is Gary from Fantastic Funders and we are doing modern history series and in this series this lecture is on the uh, the economic we are doing the economic critique of colonization in India the colonialism in India or okay so uh, in last lecture i gave you the introduction of the uh, this whole critique and i also shared that how britishers were cheating india and how they were economically exploiting india so in this lecture i will talk to you about lot of things first general there are few points on this is economic uh, exploitation please try to understand then when it uh, when it, there is a question of economic exploitation this becomes very important for prelim exam and mains exam dono ke liye ye zaruri hai तो इसके अंदर सबसे पहले क्या देखिए ओवरऑल कुछ जनरल बातें हैं मैं विच आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक टू यू एंड द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट आर्टिसन एंड क्राफ्ट्समैन राइट दीज पीपल वर कम्प्लीटली रूइंड्स रूइंड अब ये लोग ख़त्म हो गए बहुत सारे कारण रहे हैं ठीक है uh, उसके कुछ कुछ जो हमारे लोकल गुड्स बन रहे थे वॉट हैपन दैट वाई वर दीज पीपल डिस्ट्रॉयड बिकॉज सी मशीनरी वॉज कमिंग and this machinery was owned by britisher and this machinery could produce goods at much faster rate for for example uh, some, some particular product is being made by some artisan or craftsman and then machinery can make it much faster right so one one problem was a machinery when it came to artisan class okay second thing was that is why they got destroyed and second economically destroyed and second thing was about um, british imposed a policy of one way trade right so uh, Indian goods could not be sold in um, London, but British goods could be sold in India. So right, so there was policy of one-way trade after 1813. So where will the artisan sell its products? It would have no buyers. It would it would have much much less buyers than what Britishers would have. So obviously they lost in competition, and Britishers had the <coughs> advantage of economies of scale उनको ज़्यादा अगर आप कोई चीज़ बनाते हैं तो आपको सस्ती पड़ती है ना तो उसे economies of scale कहते हैं तो Britishers को वो सस्ता पड़ रहा था right and then british you know goods as i said machinery and this machinery was uh, you know based on powerful steam engines and everything and then you know there was railways in india you know when railways came in india many of people on facebook and twitter these days they say oh, oh look at britishers they brought uh, railways to india they benefited as bro bada unko mahan kehte ki ji facebook vera pe aajkal ki britishers ne hame railway di are hame kuch unhone di ye railway di that, that is fine because us time duniya mein railway aani thi to wo it had to come to india also because it had to come but you know when railway was introduced there were two kinds of uh, rates on it if you want to transport goods uh, in in the trains one was for britishers and one was for indians so these two kind of rents were there uh, now imagine obviously for indian this would be very costly proposition okay <clears throat> then indians were forced to sell their goods below mrp uh, rather below uh, less less a market price why mrp below market price saste mein bechne pe majboor kiya jata tha unhe fir <clears throat> कोई भी इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटी कोई भी अगर चीज़ को इम्पोर्ट हम करते थे इट इट वुड हैव हाई इम्पो यू नो इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटी और इफ एनी गुड्स ऑफ इंडियंस वुड गो टू ब्रिटिशर्स देयर इट वुड हैव हाई ड्यूटी और इंडियंस को कोई रॉ मटेरियल चाहिए था उसके ऊपर हाई ड्यूटी लग जाती थी इम्पोर्ट ड्यूटीज वर वेरी हाई ओके ओके and and they said earlier also what what they they were very early you know there was only one way trade but whatever little bit was allowed even in that uh, there were very high import duties okay then uh, um the, see there are few other things for example um, this production of uh, uh, military weapons if we talk about right military weapons uh okay so when when we talk about military weapons uh what were british are doing they they were entirely dependent on indian state what what they would do uh, they would use you know these uh, uh, the, uh, initially it was dependent on indian state but you know what british started doing they started purchasing all these go uh, goods from britain only they would import these goods so that also created a problem okay ab uh, you know so uh, basically these uh, the, the there were very popular towns as you know dhaka was there murshidabad was there all these towns which were very flourishing towns they were literally destroyed by the britishers over here in india they were depopulated population hi khatam ho gayi ji wahan pe and matlab literally khatam hi ho gaya jitna uh, uh, british jo bhi industry yahan par thi and finally you know uh, फाइनली यू नो इंडिया एंड जो एक एक्सपोर्टर था कॉटन का एज आई हैव टॉक्ट इन अर्लियर लेक्चर ऑल्सो 
हम कॉटन एक्सपोर्टर से क्या बन गए यू नो ब्रिटिश हम एक इम्पोर्टर ऑफ क्लोथ बन गए यू नो एक एक इंडिया कॉटन तो दे रहा था एक्सपोर्टर तो बन गया बट वी वर इम्पोर्टर ऑफ क्लोथ कॉटन हमारी कपड़े उनके बनाए हुए पहन रहे थे ठीक है दे इज सम कन्फ्यूजन इन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड आर्टिसन एंड क्राफ्टमैन फॉर प्यू पीपल फ्यू पीपल सो आर्टिसन इज एनी वन एनी पर्सन हु इज स्किल्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ओके आर्टिस नोज द आर्ट सो ही इज अ स्किल्ड वर्कर एंड ही प्रैक्टिस सम ट्रेड यू नो और हैंडीक्राफ्ट कुछ हैंडीक्राफ्ट वगैरह बनाता है तो वो सारा आर्टिसन का ही काम होता है ठीक है ना अब फॉर फॉर एग्जांपल यू नो कोई कॉम्प्लिकेटेड टूल बनाना है जैसे एक सिंपल हथौड़ा ही बनाना है हैमर बनाना है राइट और जैसे कोई सिंपल सी कोई चीज़ बनानी है इवन दैट इज वर्क ऑफ आर्टिसन ओनली ओके सो दैट वॉज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ नंबर वन वॉज ऑफ आर्टिसन एंड क्राफ्ट्स ओके नंबर टू so this is number 2 is exp- we'll see uh, how uh, peasantry that impoverished peasantry okay so peasantry uh, uh, jo kisan the unke sath kya problem ho rahi thi all of us know that there was problem of rent okay and uh, what was the problem it was high heavy assessment of rent was there uh, what else was there that you see uh, you might think we have already talked about these words like riyat wadi ई एंड महल वाड़ी आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट इट इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर एंड सो मेनी अदर टर्म्स दिदना सिस्टम एंड यू नो ऑल दीज टर्म्स एंड देन दीज परमानेंट सेटलमेंट सिस्टम आई ऑलरेडी टॉक टू यू ऑल दीज टर्म्स ऑल दीज सिस्टम आई विल बी टॉकिंग टू यू सून इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर बट वट कंडीशन ऑफ दीज पीपल वॉज इवन वर्स ओके कल्टिवेटर जो थे जो रियात वाड़ी में होते थे इन सिस्टम के अंदर जो लोग होते थे रियातवाड़ी में एंड महलवाड़ी में द कंडीशन ऑफ द प्रेजेंट इन दीज सिस्टम वॉज द वर्स्ट ओके दिस इज अ फैक्ट दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड देन इवन यू नो दो द डिमांड ऑफ लैंड रेवेन्यू इट केप्ट ऑन इंक्रीजिंग राइट बट दैट इज अ सरप्राइजिंग थिंग दिस कैन कम एज अ क्वेश्चन इन प्रिलिम एग्जाम एंड मीन्स ऑफ कोर्स दैट वेन द डिमांड ऑफ लैंड रेवेन्यू दिस लैंड रेवेन्यू this demand increased okay but what really happened that land revenue uh, this demand is increasing but the land revenue as such decreased aisa kya ho gaya land revenue ki demand bad gayi lekin kam ho gaya aise kaise ho gaya because see uh, uh, because of the policies of the britisher actually what was happening in india that the prices of the agricultural products were rising okay when the when the prices uh, rose you know and when the prices rise what happen uh, you know some the price rises the demand falls you know demand falls so that was one right although the demand of agriculture products generally inflexible it remains almost constant but there is sort of some impact and second thing the production right uh production uh, declined because see there was fragmentation of land and there was no capitalization of agriculture zameen tukde tukdon mein bad chuki thi chote chote tukde reh gaye the and there was no capitalization capitalization of agriculture ka matlab hota hai agriculture ke andar koi badi investments nahi ho rahi thi because there was no new technology no new tech no tractor no you know nothing nothing like the, all this was there okay that that's one part of it what was else was happening see government did nothing to improve the agriculture the, the so the role of the government uh, the role of the government was worse uh, the they did nothing to improve the agriculture government did nothing to improve agriculture so this is a, um, one made a major problem okay so one was the problem of tax was high but the way in which it was collected was also very poor so poor method of collecting tax dekhi ek to hota hai aapse tax lu main aake aur dusra hota hai aapse main tax kaise le raha hu thappad maar ke le raha hu main aapse tar pareshan kar raha hu duguna duguna le raha hu aapse you know when you are supposed to pay less me say 10 rupees i come and ask you 20 rupees <coughs> and i keep five with me five i give to senior kar sab mein baant diya and 10 i give to the government this is what is happening today also right so this is the problem uh, manner of tax collection was harsh now if the peasant failed to uh, the, see if you now this is a collection right i am talking about collection over here but uh, imagine if <coughs> if it's a question of um uh, but if the peasant is unable to pay the land is unable to pay what happens mai pay nahi kar pa raha ji revenue jo wo mere se mang rahe hain to what happens सिंपल टेक अवे माई लैंड वो मेरी लैंड मेरे से छीन लेते थे टेक माई लैंड 
दिस इज वुड दे वुड डू यू नो एंड दिस वुड पुट ऑन सेल एंड अरियर जो पैसे इकट्ठे होते थे वो दे वर कलेक्टेड एंड आमतौर पर क्या होता था लेकिन वट वुड हैपन दैट पेजेंट इससे पहले गवर्नमेंट कुछ करे वो खुद ही लैंड को बेच देता था बिकॉज यू नो पेजेंट वुड सेल द लैंड हिमसेल्फ बिकॉज द गवर्नमेंट वुड नॉट पे हिम एनी थिंग तो पेजेंट वुड सेल द लैंड पेजेंट लैंड सोल्ड दिस इज वॉट इज हैपनिंग ओके नो see most often that whenever you know he this is his inability to pay the land revenue it you know um, okay this is a circle actually i'd like to talk to you uh let me just make a, a square here okay so here so what happened that uh he, he cannot pay rent right can't pay so what he would do he would you know uh, borrow money so he would borrow are mother india ka scene hi hai nothing more nothing less okay borrow money but this money would be borrowed at high uh, interest rate okay at high interest rate this is the uh, which money would be borrowed right and uh, because uh, now jo, jo new law hota tha new laws also they helped money lender because there were no conditions on him he could collect lend, uh, uh, the rent back as he wanted he could charge as much rent as he want uh, money he wanted these days we have rbi government controlling you cannot charge beyond a particular uh, rate of interest banks at least cannot do that you know there's a limit to it right now and these the market forces are also there uh, which govern the rent right? this revenue uh, the the interest rate and you know Even government has these subsidies scheme these days. आपने कभी सुना होगा हाँ, we will give you subsidy on agricultural loans. What does that mean? That the uh, that uh, interest rate on the on the uh, um, rent to the agriculturist or the peasant is subsidized. उसके अंदर interest कम होत लगता है, ठीक है जो loan लिया गया है, right? And you know this money lender was a very uh, this money lender over here. He's a very clever guy. First of all, uh, you know British government helped him, and second thing is that he would go to court. and you know court ke janjat mein dal ke rakhta tha he would misuse law to his favor so that was was happening Na, then you know aap jaise mother india mein hota jo birju hota hai in mother india movie you see if you seen that movie what happens that birju goes and says lala show me the book where how can you charge me more i have already paid you so much money so he lala says oh, lala laughs very loud and you know we, uh, uh, lala says to birju that okay take this account and see what happens then you know uh, Birju gets the account book, but he cannot read it because he is illiterate. And you know, in spite of having a whole account in front of him, he cannot confront Lala over there, who is paying money to the Birju, because uh, uh, he cannot understand it. Okay, so ignorance and illiteracy, these they there were a major curse, and a land you know, peasant was being exploited. and then you know the peasant would purchase uh, the the land you know peasant would sell this uh, his crop at a very low rate because no one will give him high price that was another problem right and then you know uh, what happened okay there, there's more uh, let me change the color so that there is no confusion about it um, okay so uh, so what uh, what is happening here that uh, uh, okay let me just uh, rub it only so just to make it clear yeah so uh, what more is happening see as i said uh, earlier there were places like dhaka and murshidabad now these places had uh, the huge industry but now this industry is in ruins why i have already talked about it because there were big machines there were import policy there were money control by the british government throughout the british empire i'm talking about pure british empire mein aisa ho raha tha machine aayi interest foreign policy pe control unki wajah se wo economy ko apne mutabik chala rahe the so what happened that that there was no industry left in india and when there was no industry Uh, what happened what do people do people do agriculture they come down to do uh, and when there is more, there are more people on agriculture there is overburdening okay zyada log ab ek hi kaam ko kar rahe hain to obviously income dies and income slow you know falls and you know and then uh, there was lack of uh, modern industry usse agriculture implements bhi nahi ban rahe to industry na hone se do nuksan ho gaye hain so basically i can tell you to, to to sum it up the the position of the peasantry in india was this that uh, he was crushed right he was crushed under triple burden triple burden this man peasant how what triple burden number 1 is of government government would exploit him number 1 number 2 zamindar would exploit him zamindar and number 3 the person who exploited him is money lender 
so this is how uh, uh, the what was the condition of the peasant the economic condition of the peasant in india but don't you uh, you know i don't worry even these people zamindars and even they were exploited i'll talk to you there were two kind of zamindar at this time one was old zamindar and one was new landlord is uske bare mein abhi baat karte hain okay ruin of old zamindar and how there was new landlordism and there was new landlordism okay so uh see what is happening that mo most of the these old zamindars of bengal and you know and madras they were suffering right and especially because of uh, we know the, uh, these are bengal and madras they were suffering especially because of the uh, this uh, uh, policy of uh, lord warren hastings jo iski policy aayi thi uh, ki uh, um, of uh, per permanent settlement system right and whosoever would be the highest bidder that person that policy right complete system the permanent settlement system of 1993 so, sorry so, i'm sorry uh, this is 1793 not 1993 why would that be Yeah, you know. Uh, so uh, I have already talked about this policy, and if you have listened to the earlier lecture, you can please refer to that for this. Uh, and you know, this permanent settlement system it was there in North Med Madras, and this perma uh, this was there in Madras, and then there the, this uh, uh, there was temporary settlement system, temporary settlement system, and that was in UP, right? Now this they were equally harsh, right? Don't th think that because it was permanent, and thus it was more harmful. But equally harsh. harsh now per uh, right now in order uh, that uh, britishers were uh, you know that uh, that zamindars are able to pay the rent the government gave them par right so uh, zamindar was empowered by you know he was given pars and so that they could get for why to to uh, to to pay rent to government and british government of course अब उसमें क्या होता था दैट दैट यू नो एंड यू नो दे दे वर एम पार्ट दी जमींदार वर एम पार्ट टू कलेक्ट मैक्सिमम रेंट राइट दैट वाज परमानेंट सेटलमेंट सिस्टम ओनली कि यू कैन कलेक्ट एज मच रेंट एज यू वांट गवर्नमेंट हैज अ परमानेंट सेटलमेंट सिस्टम दैट देर परमानेंटली सेटल द रेंट एंड दिस इज रेंट यू हैव टू पे टू गवर्नमेंट वट एक्स्ट्रा यू कलेक्ट यू कैन कीप टू यूर दिस वॉज परमानेंट सेटलमेंट सिस्टम राइट सो दिस वॉज हैपनिंग राइट सो दिस वे जमींदार ग्रीव प्रोस्परस तो जमींदार की प्रोस्पैरिटी बढ़ गई तो दिस इज द उसकी प्रोस्पेर देयर वेल्थ इंक्रीज राइट ना जो मनीड क्लास थी जिनके पास पैसा था इस टाइम पे दे वॉन्टेड मोर लैंड बिकॉज दे वर नॉट हैविंग एनी अदर प्लेस टू इन्वेस्ट सो दे यू नो वट दे वुड डू दे वुड बाय लैंड दे वुड बाय मोर एंड मोर लैंड okay because they had don't have any other place to invest there is no industry where would the money go they, they would just invest you know then there was issue of subletting so basically zamindar is the new landlordism this is they are owning all the land now there is one more issue of subletting subletting letting ka matlab hota hai mere paas uh, i have the land and maine you know i have to pay government to the government but what do i do i i give it to you right there is some person mr x and this, this is me over here i own the land what i do i i give this person my land and he pays rent to me and i pay that rent to the government and, but government is nothing to do with mr this person okay because i am unable to grow enough agriculture I'm, because i am a very poor uh, i'm a farmer with very poor knowledge who does not grow know how to grow radish or whatever so what i do i i give this person the land so, but you know i cannot pay so i give him now what would happen that uh, i would just keep on uh, you know this per now this person also did not could not grow much uh, you know while practicing agriculture and what he would do he would further give the land so in this way what happened in british india this land was the subletting was done over 50 times 50 times this subletting was done can you imagine the complexity of the society at that time right so this was happening now uh, realizing that uh, you know um, Uh, uh, that the the zamindars when they realized that they owe their existence to british or this they started supporting british government so this was happening okay now uh, okay so that this is like one more reason that there was ruin of old zamindar and there was new landlordism purana chota zamindar khatam ho gaya because he could not pay the rent and the policy of permanent settlement system ki wajah se there was new landlordism okay and so uh, we move to the next in this in, the, in economic exploitation only by the british the next is so uh, basically we are done with that there was artisan who was destroyed and then there was um, uh, peasant right and then there was um, the zamindar 
ओके तो ऑल ऑफ देम हैव बीन डिस्ट्रॉयड वट इज तो एग्रीकल्चर एज सच इन इट सेल्फ वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड बाई ब्रिटिश हाउ बिकॉज देर वॉज एज ए सेड अर्लियर देर वॉज ओवर क्राउडिंग ओवर क्राउडिंग ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड देन यू नो देर वॉज फ्रेगमेंटेशन दिस ऑल्सो आई हैव से टोल्ड यू अर्लियर ओके सो एग्रीकल्चर वॉज डिस्ट्रॉयड एंड देन यू नो देर वॉज दे कुडेंट कैपिटल देर वॉज नो कैपिटलाइजेशन दैट मीन देर वॉज नो यूज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर और यू नो हाई यूल्डिंग वराइटी ऑफ सीड्स नथिंग कुड लाइक दैट हैपन सो देर वॉज पुअर साइंटिफिक एडवांसमेंट एंड यू नो नॉर्मली ऑल दीज एबसेंटी लैंड लॉर्ड्स एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ट अबाउट दिस एबसेंटी लैंड लॉर्ड दैट दीज पीपल फॉर द लैंड लॉर्ड्स हु वर एबसेंट फ्रॉम द हु वर नॉट लिविंग हेयर दे वर नॉट डूइंग एनी थिंग ऑन द फील्ड एंड देर वुड लिव इन द सिटीज एंड दे वुड जस्ट कलेक्ट द रेंट एंड गिव इट टू द ब्रिटिश एंड कीप अ पार्ट विद दम सेल्फ खैर राइट सो गवर्नमेंट यू नो रिफ्यूज गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो सेट दैट वी विल नॉट इम्प्रूव एग्रीकल्चर इट इज नॉट आर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी वॉट सो एवर ओके दे दे सेट नो इट इज नॉट सो सी वेन एट द सेम टाइम रेलवेज के ऊपर ऑन रेलवे थ्री सिक्सटी करोड़ रुपीज वॉज स्पेंड ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एट दैट टाइम बाई ब्रिटिश इंडिया लेस दैन फिफ्टी करोड़ रुपीज वर स्पेंड दिस वॉज द प्रॉब्लम राइट एंड सी the inorganic fertilizer was not known at that time you know only animal manure was being used so there were uh, in indian agriculture no inorganic uh, fertilizer right these can have their own harmful impact but then ultimately uh, the, the, they help in growth also and imagine till 1939 uh, there were only six agricultural uh, colleges of uh, colleges in india uh now these days every state in india has at least one agricultural university at that time there were only six up to 1939 and not just this uh, some of them have more than one you know this fact was to, i was actually traveling by train one day and i met this uh, agricultural scientist uh, from a very renowned agricultural university and then he was talking to me about that how agricultural uh, universities developed in india so very interesting history in itself nevertheless so the you know there was no primacy of literacy no focus on literacy and that also helps in uh helps rather, uh rather that also destroys agriculture okay so if we talk, if i talk to you about uh and uh, ne- next thing you know is what i'd like to talk to you is about the development of uh, industry in india okay uh, just let me put it here De- development of industry in india what was happening in industry see machine age uh, in india this started in 1850 now industrial revolution started much earlier okay now the first uh, jo textile mill lagai gayi thi the first textile mill kisne lagai thi wo first textile mill uh, it was set up in uh, 1853 and if i call it right it was yeah it was set in bombay and this was by there was a person very interesting name kovas ji nana boy very important name this is the uh, beginning of the, the first textile mill it is a huge industry today first it was kovaji nana boy ne lagayi thi 1853 mein that this is the first industry ki development ki kuch facts hain paper mein puche ja sakte hain when are the first jute mill set up ab kahan hogi is obvious right that would be in bengal lekin bengal mein jahan kahan hui thi ye this was set up at a place called rishda rishda right and this was in 1855 year is not important and then we had development of so many other industry like you had development of press and you know uh, rice was there and then ginning and uh, yet yeah, sugar industry developed a lot textile i have already said you uh, woolen woolen industry developed a lot and then you know all those industries small industries also mineral salt and mica and salt peter so all these things the industries were developed uh, developing at the uh, developed at that time and what was the uh, when i talk to about industry one of the important factor is co- cost of labor and la- uh, what was the cost of labor in india at that time very very cheap okay now uh, raw material ha yeah raw industry when we talk about industry we also talk about raw material and raw material was easily available in india and you know um, even for for the some inter- indian products for example tea was there or jute and you know uh, manganese and for all these products there was international demand at that time this, this was the scene of the industry in india at that time there were some very important facts right but 
इट वॉज ओनली ओनली इंडस्ट्री जहां पर इंडियंस कुछ कर पाए वेर इंडियंस को डू समथिंग वेर देर हैड प्रॉपर शेयर इट वॉज कॉटन इंडस्ट्री एज ए सेड अर्लियर ऑल्सो इन वन ऑफ द लेक्चर इवन दो द कॉटन इंडस्ट्री वॉज डिस्ट्रॉय टू अ ग्रेट एक्सटेंड बाय द ब्रिटिश बिकॉज ऑफ देयर पुअर पॉलिसी इन स्पाइट ऑफ दैट आर कॉटन एंड सिल्क टेस्टाइल रिमेन डोमिनेंट राइट एंड यू नो हाउ बट दे वर फ्यू प्रॉब्लम ऑल्सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल द लोन राइट द लोन वर वेरी कॉस्टली फॉर इंडियंस वेरी कॉस्टली लोन फॉर इंडियंस एंड यू नो सो वॉट हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ग्रेजुअली इंडियंस ग्रेजुअली इट हैपन राइट दैट इंडियन बैंक्स केम ऑन for uh, yeah, right there was husharpur bank very it was uh, one of the longest lasting banks of india uh, they were private banks and owned by individuals now uh, there as i said uh, why industry could not develop uh, okay let me just uh, change the color so the the one one was this right that loans were very costly and number two number two reason of why industry could not develop in india railway uh, as i said there was a discriminatory policy in railway the number three there was no heavy industry see one is normal industry one is heavy industry jo heavy industry hoti hai it makes the machines for the small, smaller industry and you know uh, they like for example or, or even the basic things like uh, steel so uh, in, in the heavy industry was not set up in india when you don't have steel how will you have any other industry in india most of the machine are made of steel imagine the first steel industry in india come on geography students you know this right the first steel industry was set up in india in 1913 the first heavy industry steel plant राइट ना प्लांटेशन एग्रीकल्चर आल्सो ग्रू एट दिस टाइम जैसे कि इंडिगो टी और कॉफी शॉप चल रहा था ठीक है अब टॉक टू यू कैसे दीन बंधु मित्रा ने उसके अंदर नील दर्पण के अंदर मेंशन किया है वो इंडिगो रिवोल्ट 1860 वाले जो हुए थे ओके एंड लेटर ऑन हम देखेंगे कैसे चंपारण सत्याग्रह भी बाद में जाके इंडिगो से जुड़ेगा सो बट वट हैपन दैट वी डिवेलप्ड इंडिगो राइट सो दिस इज लाइक वन नंबर है टू थ्री ओके लिस्ट कम डाउन ओवर हेयर नंबर फोर इज let me just clear it okay that will be easier for you then uh, num- this is the reason of destruction of industry right one is loan right number 2 is railway number 3 is no heavy industry and number 4 uh, which i am talking about now is plantation now there was a huge plantation industry developing in india especially related to indigo and tea but what happened then germans they developed the german people are very intelligent very hard working people had yeah, german people they developed um, you know uh, a new d- synthetic dye right this this they people developed synthetic dye right and w- when synthetic dye came it was a, uh, a, a what do you call that Uh, they, it was not substituted in india indians were still forced to grow indigo so that and there was complete destruction of our industry here right and you know uh, then this tea industry this tea industry where did it all de- develop tea industry in india kahan kahan develop hui thi is time pe it was in assam bengal south india and partially hills of himachal pradesh so kangra wala area jo hai himachal mein right and ima- imagine this this uh, this these three sector of plantation uh, i mean uh textile jute uh, you know uh, and uh, not uh, third third is not exactly plantation right it, uh, t- i mean tea and uh, jute okay and then uh, also cotton right now 40% population of india 40% worker jo tha hamara textile sector ka jute mein aur in cotton in any industry mein laga hota right up to 1946 this shows that no other industry developed people were working the, just this much only okay so agar koi bhi uh, you know uh, uh, product would come from let's say that now this is another problem fifth problem and this is problem of import duties and whenever you know new, uh, new things came uh, from let's say us or any any place right, right uk or friends whatever was imported into india with even the raw material that was very very costly in india right and um, जो इंडियंस होते थे इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज ओके दिस इज नंबर सिक्स पॉइंट ओवर हेयर दैट इंडियंस जो इंडस्ट्री ओन करते थे जैसे सीमेंट या आयरन दो सो इंडियन इंडस्ट्री दिस इंडियन इंडस्ट्री जैसे सीमेंट आयरन एंड स्टील सीमेंट यू नो आयरन एंड दिस इज आयरन and this is steel whatever right now these people they were denied protection right and foreign industry there was no protection for them and foreign industry was protected that was a problem right and what what more was there B- and see when british imports were given preferences those were called imperial preferences this can be a question preference to british imports is called uh, imperial preferences and you know industry grow it was confined to some areas only 
so this was another problem number eight i'm writing over here uh, number eight this is uh, so the, what is this problem here that uh, confined industry okay confined the, the industry was the size of the industry uh, the location of the industry is actually was actually uh, limited to very very few areas our working class now this is the last point actually jo hamara working class tha jo modern capitalist tha right they were totally new to indian uh, you know uh, this the industry and all the agree all the things that were uh, happening at this time so they represented the technology and new system of ek economic organization jo aaya ya social relation aaya right now they had an indian outlook and they were interested in the industrial development of the nation okay now this is uh, the point now they were interested in indian development all these people indian development chahe wo industrialist tha yahan ka is time ka right ye nahi ki industrialist the britisher ki ja ke support karte the but the point is that britishers did not let them grow because they supported india theek hai so this this was another problem of econ economy in india uh, i'll just clear the screen and you know uh, so we have talked about the uh, number 1 is artisan number 2 we talked about is peasantry and number 3 was zamindar and number 4 is agriculture number 5 we talked about was industry okay so artisan peasantry zamindar agriculture industry uh, now all these Im things impact economy of india next thing that impacts the economy of india at this time it was <coughs> uh, it was um, what do you call this this uh, uh, poverty right poverty and famines in india these also played a very huge role in india i'll just talk about them now all these things uh, uh, the drain theory which i will be talking in the next lecture and then decay of local industry and high taxation all these things everything every policy it led to strain on agriculture okay because there was strain on agriculture and you know uh, right so so all, the people were under extreme poverty because of that right and this uh, culminated in in a series of famines in india and actually during the second half of the 19th century okay second half of 19th century was a decade was a period of uh, famines so what kind of, what were those famines i'll just list the few famines jo mujhe yaad hain you can always add on if you want in the comment section uh, i'll add the annotation to it the main famines that i know are 1860 to 61 was a major famine in which uh, this was in uh, western up right west and about number of people died here were 2 lakh this was happening there in western up right number 2 is 1865 to 66 this famine was there in areas of uh, you know these eastern areas this uh, odisha Be odisha bengal and then you had bihar okay and then madras it was happening here and in this in this famine 20 lakh people died right and then there was very famous famine of 1868 to 70 and this was in punjab and again in western up and of in bombay so in this famine uh, around 14 lakh people died imagine number of people who are dying because of famines and number 4 uh, is a very famous famine of 1943 and this in this famine this was happened in bengal and you know 30 lakh people died in it unbelievable unbelievable uh, number of deaths and you know this this for me 1943 you might have uh, seen this painting uh, uh, on the it's called the uh, you know bengal famine of 1943 and this painting was by a very famous author called zainal abudin and please remember his name because this has been mentioned in ncert so you also must know this right and there was one uh, research happened uh, that was done by a person called colin clark right Uh, and now what he said he said that uh, from 1925 to 34 you know india and china had the lowest per capita income in world now, india china these countries had lowest per capita income in world these western countries today call us a poor country but they are rich because they sucked our money they to call our money isliye gadbad hui hai itni sari ठीक है ना एंड यू नो वी वर द रिचेस्ट कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड आई टॉक्ड अबाउट इन द यू नो इसके बारे में पहले बात की है हमने कैसे इंडिया वाज सो रिच एंड देन बिकॉज ऑफ ब्रिटिश और हमारी ये कंडीशन हो गई एंड यू नो लुक एट द कंडीशन ऑफ द पीपल इन 1930s द एवरेज लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी वाज 32 इयर्स इट्स अराउंड 67 इयर्स टुडे बट एट दैट टाइम इट वाज 32 इयर्स ओनली 32 साल एवरेज एक्सपेक्टेंसी थी कोई इससे क्या पता लग रहा है देयर वाज नो मॉडर्न साइंस नो सैनिटेशन नथिंग बीमारियां ही बीमारियां 
right you know all these famines that happened here what do you think were the reason for it see please understand most of these famine famines jo india mein hue hain these were man made uh, famines theek hai ji kaise there was no agriculture as i said no industry and there was very poor management of whatever was produced in india now see we uh, poor management no agriculture industry or management and you cannot say that poverty was the result of india's geography and nor it was the result of uh, uh, so poverty in india was not result of uh, uh, geography right indian geography is good or the even mughal rule see lot of people these days these religiously fanatic people they keep on saying that muslims came and looted us and thus we are poor today no it is the britishers who looted no, not these mughals right you know it is because of the british economic policy that we are so and you know uh, and then you know many states like you know the, the pop famines were so extreme just to give you one data that uh, the in rajputana right in rajputana 33% population was lost because of famines itna bura hal tha and just uh, before i you know end this part of uh, economy lecture the lecture is not ending though uh, i'll like give you one very interesting fact and this is just a coincidence that the date of beginning of industrial revolution in britain and the date of starting of uh, the british conquest of bengal it was same right that was 1757 the plus c ki ladai hai jo okay so industrial revolution and bengal ke upar british ka control both these started since 1757 right so these these are these all this proof shows that how bad british economic policy was but how do we know ab you see for the first time uh, let's say you you see the bulb or let's say you have a glass in your hand glass of water for the first time everyone you know this thing very simple if you put water in glass is easier to drink but when the first time thing is invented it is very difficult to imagine it even when the thing has been invented it looks very simple bulb is there it's very simple to make a bulb you can make you know if you have some, some knowledge and some raw material you can make it at home also now but can you make it for the first time without knowing the formula no in the same way how did we come to know that you know britishers are looting us so where do, how uh, this economic critique of britishers this critique of theirs it was started in 19th century by early uh, leaders uh, who were known as moderates okay now the, the uh, inko moderates kehte the moderates kyon kehte the iske bare mein karenge baat they mota taur pe on the, on the broader uh, scale i can just say that because their method of fighting british was a moderate method they were not extremists they will not go and do violence they would do petitioning or they at the max they would do hartal but they would not kill britishers okay so this was happening so uh, uh, you know all the themes uh, uh, jo built around see lot of people say because india got freedom because of uh, only the extremist and lot of people say just because of the moderate they both played a role bhai who kaise you know these moderate the, whatever the, you know the, uh, the the themes they built around them only they were later on you know uh, popularized the whatever the method of fighting they they introduced they were later on popularized and you know uh, there were lot of lectures and pamphlets and you know newspaper dramas we used everything these days you you have nukkad natak these street plays and same way at that time you know you would have uh, dramas and these days you also have the songs so that do, those days also had songs and then you had newspapers and you know lectures were there and pamphlets were there so all these things were there at that time uh, used in uh, uh, propagation of the idea or, or the spread of idea of economic critique right now first half jo tha the hamara agar 19th century ka first half dekhe yani 1800 se almost 1850 tak ka dekh le not exactly 1850 तो जो हमारे पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड था टूवर्ड द ब्रिटिश राइट वी हैड पॉजिटिव एटीट्यूड वी होप कि वो हमारी हेल्प करेंगे दे वुड मॉडर्नाइज इंडिया राइट एंड वी होप वी थॉट पॉजिटिव क्या था मॉडर्नाइज करेंगे हमें ओके एंड दे वुड ब्रिंग साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी टू इंडिया दे वुड इंट्रोड्यूस कैपिटल इन इंडिया दे वुड इन्वेस्ट इन इंडिया राइट लेकिन कुछ भी ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं उन्होंने किया फिर क्या हुआ देन वी केम टू द लेटर हाफ ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी स्पेशली आफ्टर एटीन फिफ्टी सेवन राइट एंड नाइनटीन हंड्रेड प्लस द ईयर्स आफ्टर दैट ऑल्सो इनफैक्ट यू नो इनफैक्ट एटीन सिक्सटी ऑनवर्ड ऑल द होप्स वर बिलाइड दे वॉज नो सोशल डेवलपमेंट नो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट political development were very very weak so uh, there was a progress in new some some what pro progress but it was very weak so you know british uh, jo image thi wo ab hame lagne samajh aani shuru hui the britishers are of no good to india
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी यू नो ब्रिटिश रूल वॉज बेस्ड ऑन टू प्रीमाइसि ब्रिटिश रूल था वो दो बातों पर बेस्ड था नंबर वन दैट ब्रिटिशर आर इनविंसिबल उनको हराया ही नहीं जा सकता नंबर टू दिस वॉज बेस्ड दैट ब्रिटिश रूल इज फॉर गुड ऑफ इंडिया पीपल आर वेरी वेरी कन्विंस्ड ऑफ दिस दीज टू थिंग्स एंड ब्रिटिशर स्ट्रेटेजिकली इंप्लीमेंटेड दिस बिकॉज फॉर एग्जाम्पल दीज दे मेनी पॉलिटिशियन से नॉट ऑल ऑफ सम ऑफ देम आर गुड पॉलिटिशियन इवन द मॉडर्न डे पॉलिटिशियन सम ऑफ देम आर लाइक वी आर फॉर यूर गुड एंड दैट इज वाई यू नो वी यू शुड वोट एज ब्ला ब्ला एंड यू नो ऑल दैट बट सी सेम वे वी थॉट एट दैट टाइम देर वॉज अ वेरी जेन्यून फील इमंग द पीपल दैट इट इज फॉर आर गुड ओके For, uh, so but, uh, but lot of people were not uh, uh, realizing this that, that they are not for our good so these policies uh, that there was no economic social economic cultural political development in india rather there was ruin we realized that they are not for good of india and secondly because of revolt of 1857 we we thought that yes britishers are not invincible britishers can be defeated okay britishers ko haraya ja sakta hai okay so this was happening right so three names basically uh, stand out if we talk about the economic uh, um, critique of uh, britishers so these three people are one is a very important name please remember this name dada bhai nauroji nauroji okay number one second name over here is uh, justus mahadev govind rana de m g rana de and number 3 over here it was r c dat ramesh chandra dat so what was their role this uh, dada bhai naroji is known as the grand old man of india right uh, uh, okay he was born in 1825 and he is known as the grand old man of india this question has been asked in uplc many a times that who is known as the grand old man of india even recently it was asked and then you know he was a very successful businessman and then you know his story is that he gave away all his wealth his money uh, for the national movement in india and then you know he he, he is known as the india's first economic thinker इकोनॉमिक थिंकर की बात करें इंडिया के अंदर सबसे पहले इन्होंने ही सोचा एंड देन ही वाज आल्सो द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ कांग्रेस राइट 1886 आई डिस्टिंक्टली रिमेंबर दिस एंड देन 1893 वाज देयर 1906 लेटर ऑन ही आल्सो कम राइट ही वाज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ कांग्रेस एंड देन ही वाज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ ईस्ट इंडिया एसोसिएशन आल्सो इन 1866 सी ही इज वन ऑफ द पीपल वन ऑफ द फ्रीडम फाइटर्स हु हैज बीन लीस्ट रिस्पेक्टेड इन इंडियन हिस्ट्री टू माय माइंड बिकॉज़ ही द कंट्रीब्यूशन इज डन इज इनॉर्मस इट इज बिकॉज़ of him one of the primary contribution we realize that we are in a problem and because of his uh, contribution we could fight britishers had he not done his research how would have we have realized that we are uh, in a mess because of britishers his analysis unhone samjhaya हमें कि हमें बेवकूफ बना रहे हैं अंग्रेज हमें लूट रहे हैं तो हम समझे चीजों को इसलिए हम कुछ आगे जाके कर पाए इतना बड़ा रोल था लेकिन दादा भाई नारो जी को आज इंडिया में वो सम्मान नहीं मिलता है जितना लोग और और लीडर्स को देते हैं इट्स नॉट दैट औरों को नहीं देना चाहिए बट ही ऑल्सो यू नो डिजर्व दैट यू नो एंड देन महादेव गोविंद राणा डे ही टोल्ड पीपल द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ इंडस्ट्री right uh, if, if if anyone wants to focus on industry and then they can read about uh, mahadev govind rana day and if anyone wants to justify that we should focus on agri industry then agriculture they should also read his part because he he taught the people about the values of modern industrial development and then this very very intelligent person r c dat of course he was an iso ics officer eh so uh, we read about that he published a book i have already named it i will not write the name just the uh, short form for it he wrote the book that economic history of india the, the economic history of india and he examined the minute details right from 1757 se inhone inko details ko nikala tha probably that was in uh, 1901 only when his book was published right so they also popularized all these people swadeshi ko inhone bahut focus kiya hamare local goods ke upar focus kar kiya inhone so the Indo indian industry develops at that time right and then you know there were other leaders also who contributed a, a lot apart from these three people but these three people have to be in your answer dada bhai naro ji justice mg rana de rc dat and who are the other people there was gv joshi ji ठीक है जी एंड देन द सो मच सो मेनी पीपल एक्चुअली साउथ इंडिया से आए थे सुब्रमण्यम अय्यर सुब्रमण्यम अय्यर एंड देन देयर वाज गोखले ऑफ कोर्स वाज देयर गोखले ऑलवेज कंट्रीब्यूटेड टू एवरीथिंग 
and then there was a uh, pc ray was also there he also made a great contribution so you know these people question the nature and the purpose of british rule they question that right conclusion ye hai is baat ka yahan pe nikalta ki jo colonialism tha it was the main obstacle to india's economic uh, uh, development right so the first conclusion uh, that came uh, um, you know take which was taken out by these uh, critiques was that the colonialism was a major obstacle to indian economic development number 1 number 2 that um, a sense of the british imperialism it lays in the subordination of the indian economy to the british economy so uh, that british imperialism it is based on subordination and if we are subordinated then only their economy grows and our economy falls back we must not be subordinated to them number 3 is uh, you know uh, the, the three aspects of uh, domination jiske basis ke upar uh, britishers dominate kar rahe hain hamare upar those are trade industry and finance trade industry and finance what else uh, jo british hamari exploitation kar rahe hain wo plunder se nahi kar rahe the that happened lot of time during mughal period but or or you know tribute based this and but that money remained in india they didn't go outside india but with british it is neither tribute or plunder it was through a complex mechanism of free trade foreign capital investment you know sometimes when i'm studying all these uh, scams in india i feel that very soon most of the people will not able be uh, will not be able to understand even that they have been cheated for example let's talk about 2g scam how many people understand that actually there was something called you know something like that so uh, what happened in 2g scam how many people know or let's even say coal scam okay, you know what how many people know that what kind of scam it was exactly very few people So, so, so we need these people like these you know um, uh, who could who can guide uh, who can talk about economic corruption how these people, political corruption is leading to economic corruption this interrelation needs to be developed even today right khair you know they realize that in that india has been transferred transformed into a supplier of raw material supplier of raw material uh, you know uh, although we were actually the uh, manufacturers are uh, uh, using the raw material right and then number 6 that poverty in india poverty in india is because of british policy and not because of god or any other natural factor same way poverty in today in india is not because of uh, that we lack talent or we lack anything that needs the, that is needed we we have people ready to work hard enough but the problem is of other things right and then you know there was uh, there are few more things in this um, these people also took part in national political agitations okay and uh, Uh, for example uh, when i said talk talked about uh, nauru ji you know his main focus always was poverty okay the, now ek, this economic critique was used uh, for uh, in the indian the national political agitation right and uh, iske andar unhone ja kar kaha they said that indians are poor and we are going growing poorer because of british rule uska proof diya inhone aise karke so this is the role they played indians ko awake karne mein jagane mein to awaken the indians these this economic critique is very important don't you think that ye question sirf means mein aa sakta this will come in prelim exam i'm telling you agar analytical question paper aa gaya this will be there in paper right then and you know problem of uh, poverty this problem was seen as a problem of a national development and this it united the people it was a problem poverty jo ki problem thi ye national development ki problem thi india ke andar to iski wajah se log united ho gaye and you know then there was complete transformation of the country yahan pe ho gayi kyunki on the basis of technology and capital enterprise this is hamari economic activities ka aim hi ye hai इंडस्ट्रियलिज्म uh, को एक सुपीरियर स्टेज ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन माना गया था ये भी इन्होंने किया था इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन को सुपीरियर स्टेज ऑफ एक सिविलाइजेशन uh, माना गया एंड यू नो इसकी वजह से इंडिया में नई नई चीजें नई एक नई एक्टिविटीज शुरू हो गई एंड देन फाइनली यू नो दिस रेलवे ट्रेड टेर एक्सचेंज फाइनांस एंड लेबर लॉज एंड ऑल दीज थिंग देवर कंसिडर्ड यू नो इंपॉर्टेंट ठीक है हमने सारी तरक्की करेंगे हम भी इंडस्ट्रियलाइज्ड होंगे लेकिन वन थिंग वाज क्लियर वी विल नॉट इंडस्ट्रियलाइज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ 
British capital. We will industrialize with Indian capital, Indian ownership. You see, these days many people give logic that uh, even freedom fighters fought against Britishers. One there is one any one basic difference. When today we talk about uh, foreign companies coming to India, we they are coming in a very controlled atmosphere, controlled environment, control con so many conditional investments only. That is why it is okay. Okay. Now, uh, see, jo India ka traditional handicraft is time pe, theek hai? Wo main aapko bata chuka hu, wo decline kar gaya. Or, uh, you know, then I have talked to you about taxation and high expenditure was there. Okay, so and then you know these uh, these all these thinkers they gave a theory of drain of wealth. Now, because this lecture has uh, lecture will be very long, so I'll I'll just give that uh, in the next lecture. I'll talk to you about the drain of the wealth theory, right? And then in in general the conclusion of the whole of the economic critique. Plus, uh, in next lecture, uh, okay, let me just write it here. Uh, the, so one is the drain of wealth theory. Uh, overall conclusion of this chapter and then I will also talk to you about the various systems or revenue collection in the next lecture okay so the, the, this was uh, um, happening in the uh, economic critique agar hum in depth kisi bhi cheez kiske bare mein baat karte hain okay and so one last thing over here uh, you know and this is subscribe you know if you subscribe to us you get a mail in your account which says that a new video has been uploaded and one more very important request is please share if you share that is support that uh, that is a huge support for me when you share you know i am encouraged to make videos better and faster so that is all and thank you for watching